Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Think young fake Pepsi, please. They picked the right one, the modern light one. Now it's Pepsi. For those who think young, so go ahead and pick the drink that lets you drink young as you think. Yes, get the right one, the modern light one. Now it's Pepsi. For those who think young. Keep regular hours, you know. Then what were you doing in the long branch at 2 o'clock this morning? <laughs> well, sometimes it's a regular 24 hours, like you. Well, at least I make good money at it. Kitty, would you really like to see me settle down and run a saloon? You might get to like it. All right, I'll do it. When? <laughs> when I'm about 50. I thought so. Good morning, Miss Kitty. Oh, hello, Chester. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, Miss Dillon? Here's a letter for you. Yeah, thanks. Uh, the envelope says it's from Judge Rambo over in Wichita. Uh huh. Anything important? Well, it's a court order for eviction. Seems Brandon Teak didn't file legally on his land over by Wagon Mound. Did you say Brandon Teak? Yeah. Well, where did you know him, Kitty? Oh, everybody knew him. Round Abilene. Yeah, he had a pretty bad reputation then. Doesn't he still? Well, I haven't seen him for some time, Kitty, but he's married and he's trying to prove up some land. Well, I don't envy you trying to put him off it. Brandon Teak never shoved very easy that I recall. Well, Miss Dillon, do you have to evict him off? Maybe the judge made a mistake or something. No, I'm no admirer of Judge Rambo, but he knows his law. Uh, we'll ride out there this afternoon, Chester. Be sure your gun's loaded, Matt. Well, maybe I won't need it, Kitty. You want to bet? No. No, I guess not. I think, Mr. Jones, you ask me, Teeks went and built himself a mighty nice place out here. Yeah, it's done fun. What brings you out this way? Well, here, you, uh, you might as well read it yourself. What's this? Court order? Immediate ev- eviction? Mm-hmm. Well, wh- what's this all about, Marshal? That's just what it says. Well, I've got my deed to this place. Yeah, but you failed to register it at the land office. Well, now, nobody told me about that. I'm sorry, Teak. You're going to be a whole lot sorrier. You try to put me off this land, Marshal. Brandon, who are you talking to? You, you stay inside, sir. It ain't nothing. And it won't hurt if I come out. Uh, this is my wife, Marshal Dillon and Chester Proudfoot. I do, ma'am. I do, ma'am. Marshal? Is there trouble, Brandon? They say we got no legal right to this place, sir. I didn't register the deed or some fool thing. No. Now, don't you worry. 
Ain't nobody gonna move us off, law or no law. It's a court order. Chief. I ain't wore a gun since I got married, Marshal, but I can sure go put one on. Brandon. Now, Sarah, you... You can't forget your promise. Especially now you can't. That's all the more reason for fighting, sir. We're going to have a child, Marshal. Most any day now. Oh. And we ain't moving. We ain't starting over. If we have to, we can do it. I'd rather die than see you go to fighting again, Brandon. Now you think on it. Sure don't make it easy on me, Marshal. What are you going to do, Tick? Well, it's a hard thing for a man like me to swallow, but I can't go against her. And I ain't putting on my gun. Well, why don't you go in and tell her that? And when will I tell her we got to get off the place? There's no hurry. Now, what about that immediate eviction? I'll be responsible for that. I guess I ought to be grateful to you. No, no. No, take not to me. Goodbye. Goodbye, Marshal. Chester here. Bye, Teague. My thing for a minute there, I thought he was going to make trouble, sure. Yeah. When are you going to put him off, Mr. Dillon? I'm going over to Wichita, Chester. I'll find out there. Monday tomorrow? Not at all. Tomorrow on Arthur Godfrey time, for instance, you can enjoy quips from the redhead himself, plus the fine singing of Richard Hayes and the Mary Mayo Singers with Dick Hyman in the orchestra. Genial Gary Moore will be joshing with his sidekick, Derward Kirby, on the Gary Moore radio show. Art Linkletter's House Party will play host to more merriment. And Bing Crosby and Rosemary Clooney will regale you with grand songs grandly sung. Listen to a lineup like that five mornings a week, and you'll never have a blue Monday or any other work day again. off his land near Wagon Mound. Oh, that, yeah. I remember. What's the trouble? Is he putting up a fight now? No, he isn't. Well, he sure must have changed. I remember Teak around here. He was a wild one. He's married now, Judge. They're expecting a child any day. A child? I told him that they could take their time about moving. Take their time? That order was to evict them at once, Marshal. I know that. Mm. <sighs> Marshal Dillon, there is no room for sentiment in the law. What's right is right. What's legal is legal. Dick's been on that land over a year, Judge. How come this business about failing to register his deed just came up? It was only recently brought to my attention. And who brought it to your attention? Lee Sprague. Not that it makes any difference. Lee Sprague owns a lot of land around Wagon Mountain. And he's filed on this piece, too. There's nothing irregular about it, Marshal, if that's what you're thinking. Legally, I'm sure everything's correct, Judge. But? But I just guess it isn't my kind of law, that's all. There's only one kind of law. The way you see it, maybe. You can't argue with facts, Marshal. Now stop being a sentimental fool. Go do your duty. Look, Judge, Brandon takes a changed man. He's done more than prove up that land. He's proved himself up, too. Homestead Act, 1862. 
Paragraph 12, after one year of the deed to such land is not duly recorded at the near... Never mind, Judge. I know how it reads. Then start acting like it. I can hold even the U.S. Marshal in contempt of court, you know. Yeah, sure, I know. You've got a lot of power, Judge. There's just one thing wrong. What's that? You never learned how to use it. I think Brandon Tigg deserves that land more than you do. Marshal, I'm in the land and cattle business. I'm making out mighty well. No man can accuse me of ever doing anything illegal or dishonest. But everybody knows I practice sharp. I'll go on practicing sharp, too. Even against a man like Tigg who's hung up his gun and steel down and tried to make a life for him and his family? What do you mean, his family? Well, there's a child coming any day now. And he's better off in town, Marshal. What? My wife stayed in the country. That's why I lost her. Well, looks to me like I'm doing Teak a favor. You've got an awful easy conscience, Sprague. Well, there's no use arguing, Marshal. You got your order, now you go put them off. No, Sprague, I'm not going to do it. What? I couldn't hold my head up if I had any part of the kind of law you and Judge Rambo want. You mean that? Yeah, I mean that. Boy, I ain't gonna let you stand in my way, Marshal. You're in for trouble. Brandon Teak and his missus both talking to that fellow yonder, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, uh, you recognize him, Chester? No, sir, I don't. He's a stranger to me. I'm saying you just ain't got no right. Uh, looks like they're all head up over something, don't it? Yeah. Miss Teak oughtn't uh, to be standing out in the heat yeah. of the day that way. Let me let Marshal Dillon settle this, Haley. Got nothing to do with it no more. That's the trouble here, Tick. I'll do, man. You told me there was no hurry about our leaving, Marshal. Now, wait a minute. Where'd you get that badge, mister? Who are you? I'm Jim Haley Marshal, deputy sheriff from Wichita. Wichita? How'd you get here? Well, I took the train to Dodge, and then they rented me a horse. Answer me, Haley. Judge Rambo sent me. I guess he felt the law needed a little enforcing down this way. He's got a court order, Marshal, just like the one you had. Plum legal. I want you people to pack up be out of here by tomorrow. Just a minute, Haley. I can take care of them, Marshal. No, Brandon, there'll be no fight. Now, Sarah, I... You t- ain't gonna do nothing except move, Teak. And right now... No. Oh, Let go, no. Mar- no. Here, Haley. Pick up his gun, Chester. Yes, sir. She hurt, Teak? I'll be all right. Huh? She only grabbed his arm. He, he's gone and hurt her, Marshal, flinging her off like that. Chester. Yes, sir. Jump on your horse and ride for Dodge. Tell Doc to get out here. Fast. <laughs> Ain't 
Doc never come out of that house, Mr. Dillon? It's been a long time, hasn't it? She shouldn't have grabbed me, but I didn't mean to hurt her. You just keep quiet, Haley. Nobody wants to hear from you. Oh, Mr. Dillon, there's Doc. Yeah. He's been over two hours. He don't look none too happy, does he? Well, Doc, the baby's dead, Matt. Oh, no. It's too bad. I didn't do it. I only pushed her. I told you to shut up, Haley. There wasn't a chance of saving the baby. It's her I've been working on. She's going to be all right now, Matt. Well, good for that anyway, Doc. Uh, Doc, tell you, Marshal. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear it, Teak. I'm sorry, too. But you can't blame me for it. Haley, I just now promised my wife I wouldn't kill you. Now, don't make me break it. Come on, Haley, I'm going to take you in the Dodge with me. <laughs> now, look here, ain't you forgetting I'm a lawman, too, Mark? I'd like to forget it. It doesn't make me very proud of being one. I come here to do a job, and I'm going to do it. As soon as his wife can be moved, of course. Now, this is all over. There's no reason for waiting longer. I promised her I wouldn't kill you now, Haley, but you come back here, I promise you I will. A man can take only so much. I'll be back. No, you won't. I'm going to throw you in jail for a while. What? Take as soon as your wife's better, you come and see me. I don't know what I can do, but things aren't going on this way. Well, I sure hope Tommy won't pick up athlete's foot from you. Now, stop athlete's foot from spreading through your family. NP27 treatment roots out athlete's foot, penetrates below skin surface where others can't reach, even into toenails. NP27 liquid stops itch, relieves pain, promotes healthy tissue. NP27 powder guards against new infection. NP27 treatment roots out athlete's foot, or your druggist will refund your money. <laughs> Chester? Oh, Doc. Where's Matt? In the office. Talking to Lee Sprague. Well, it's a little late to be talking to him, isn't it? I'd say so. Hey, Doc, you sure Brandon Teak's coming to Dodge today? Oh, that's what he told me. There's a neighbor woman staying with his wife. Uh, not that she really needs anybody now. Oh, well, I'm proud to hear that. Well, it's only been a week, but she's a strong woman. Uh, oh, here we are. Hmm? Oh, my God, he did come. <clears throat> Hello, Doc. Chester. Okay. Hmm? How's the patient? Oh, pretty good, Doc. She's being awful brave about it. But I know how she feels. Well, only time will cure that. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, Teak, uh, Mr. Jones in the office. He wanted you to go right on in when he got here. Okay. Come on in. You know Lee Sprague, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, I know him. Hello, Teak. Sprague and I were over at the land office this morning. I think we got everything straightened out. What do you mean? Here, take a look at this. What is it? It's a deed to the land you're on, Teak. And this time it's legally registered. Sure, I can see that. And it's registered in your name. That's right. Did you help him with this, Marshal? I wanted to be sure that there weren't any loopholes. And there aren't any, huh? No. You know, if it wasn't for my wife, you people would have to shoot me off that place. But I warned her I can only stand so much. You send Jim Haley out there, I'll kill him on sight. I sent Haley back to Wichita this morning. Teak, I want to tell you something. Ain't you sent enough, spray? No. Now listen. I'm a greedy man, Teak, and I'll take anything I can get. Legally. But Marshal Dillon here has been talking pretty hard to me lately. Sure. Sure, I've been listening to him, too. Well, it ain't Haley you ought to blame, Teak. It's me. What? I guess I'd have gone right on, and I could have. So I heard about your baby. Why should that matter to you? I lost my son, Teak. I lost my wife, too. 
taking my land, going to help you? You tell him, Marshal. Take, he's not taking your land. Now, that deed's in his name, ain't it? Didn't you go along to be sure he didn't make any mistake? There are no mistakes this time. Sprague can deed that land to anybody he wants to now. All clear. Well, what about it? It's yours, Teague. You... You mean... You're giving it to me? I'm not giving it to you. It's yours anyway. I'll... I'll tell Sarah... I'll tell her she was right all along. That's right, she was. But well, what about you, Marshal? Ain't there going to be trouble? You're jailing a deputy sheriff? Well, as soon as he gets back to Wichita, there'll be trouble. But don't you worry about that. I always wanted to see California anyway. <laughs> Remember how relieved you were when you heard there was at last a vaccine to stamp out polio? Remember the early doubts and fears that it hadn't really been perfected? Those days are behind us. Areas where the Salk vaccine has been taken by substantial numbers of children and adults under 40 have shown remarkable results. But studies made last year show that the most susceptible group have been neglecting themselves. Almost 41 million adults under 40 years of age have not taken as much as one polio shot. Do you doubt that this is important? If so, please note carefully that after two years of rewarding statistics, in 1958, the incidence of polio started to climb again. The vaccine won't work on people who don't take it. At least three shots, spaced as your doctor or clinic recommends, are vital for maximum protection from polio. The CBS Radio Network and its affiliated stations join the United States Department of Health in urging, get your polio shots. Get them starting now. Gunsmoke, produced and directed in Hollywood by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Vic Perrin, Gene Bates, John Daner, Barney Phillips, and Harry Bartell. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This broadcast concludes the current Gunsmoke series. Next week at this time, the CBS Radio Network and its affiliated stations will welcome back the distinguished dramatic favorite, Suspense. The premiere of this new Suspense cycle will be Alan Sloan's gripping original play, Call Me at Half Past. Be with us next Sunday at this same time for the return to these stations of Suspense. This is George Walsh speaking. Laughs are on Arthur Godfrey, weekdays on the CBS radio network. <laughs>